Let's jump into the 2020 new information I found out this year about the US Army's 6.8 millimeter next generation squad weapon. It's on its way to replacing the M16 556. The three different prototype bid specifications are top secret. Fortunately for us though, the US Army quietly released a video on their Fort Benning YouTube channel and it has all new information and a ton of never before seen interviews and footage that we're gonna share with you now. I'm Chris Cappy, here with your military sit rep. The bullet for the Textron bid is surrounded by gunpowder and encased within plastic. This couldn't be more different than the traditional way. The way the weapon ejects the round away from the chamber seems like it might be related to keeping the action temperatures cooled down. Let's take a look at what the NGSW project officer, Major Wyatt Ottomer, has to say about the 6.8mm. The NGSW program encompasses the rifle, automatic rifle, and fire control. The Air Period adversaries continue to acquire and develop capabilities that counter Army squad weapons and ammunition, reducing and in some cases negating our combat overmatch. Overmatch means the Army wants to be overpowered. They want all the enemy weapons to seem like nerf guns against our body armor. They want all our weapons to be completely overpowered, like that one guy that shows up with a $3,000 Magic the Gathering deck. One of the biggest common themes I hear in all of the NGSW briefings is the Army isn't deciding to switch rifles for the sake of upgrading. This is a response to a real world development where US generals are sounding the alarms about China and Russia moving ahead of us. Of course, this could be just saber rattling designed to increase the military budget by scaring Congress, but you can't ignore all of the evidence. In the past five years or so, the military woke up and realized they had been very good at fighting against insurgencies, but they're not as well trained or equipped to fight conventional armies. Current weapons and calibers lack the required lethality growth against protected individual targets. Those targets are employed by near-peer threats. Near-peer is a political friendly way of saying Russia, Iran, and China. So when you hear them say those near-peers really need to stop invading Crimea, you know what that's code for. For this reason, the upgrade to the new ammo configuration is specifically meant to have greater energy on target so it can defeat enemy body armor and hit targets farther out. Overmatch means the Army wants to be overpowered. In 2018, the NGSW program obligated 95% of its allocated $21.2 million from Army program element in support of Prototype Project Opportunity Notice, or PPON. So the three prototypes just finished another round of testing last month by line infantry soldiers. They gave their feedback about where they think the weapon works and where it could use improvements. Hopefully they gave the weapon engineers a compliment sandwich, say something nice, then constructive criticism, and then end it with something nice. We all know how sensitive weapons designers can be. The 2017 Small Arms Ammunition Configuration Study validated a standing requirement for increased energy at the target to defeat threat capabilities to create a very low drag projectile launched at higher velocities than conventional systems and to implement a larger caliber than the traditional 5.56 to achieve greater energy at the target. Drivers for selection were the technical feasibility in the 6.8 millimeter cartridge and technical maturity and capability of the design. The Army is utilizing an industry prototype effort to solicit the latest advancement that industry has to offer. The SAC study that the Major is referring to here is the Small Arms Ammunition Configuration Study from 2017, and this report had all of the data and graphs necessary to make the Army top brass believe that the troops on the ground needed a new round other than the 5.56 to defeat enemy body armor. None of us have seen the declassified version of the SAC study, so we don't know exactly the data they're looking at that convinced them that this program was necessary. It looks like they're putting this rifle through the ringer with everything from obstacle courses to close combat and medical evacuation training scenarios. Something interesting to note is the fire control system optic will be ready to go six months before the NGSW rifles. This is to give the three companies in the bid time to integrate the optic with their rifle. From a great article written by Connie Lee for nationaldefensemagazine.com, I got the following details. The SIG Sauer president said, quote, if SIG is chosen, then we are the least amount of risk. You don't need to burn down the factories and start a completely new factory with different technologies. End quote. 
Six Hour is implying here that going with the other ammo types would be a massive change for the ammo industry. It's a smart move. They're playing on the army's dislike of fast change. A lot of people ask me if an ammo type from one bid and a rifle from a different bid can be selected together. The answer to that would be no, because each rifle is developed specifically for that proprietary ammo. So you can't take the steel brass hybrid ammo from the Sig Sauer bid and shoot it from the General Dynamics rifle. Remember to like and subscribe to this video so that you and I can be the best of battle buddies. Fire Control Peepon was released in third quarter fiscal year 19. Fire Control prototype deliveries from this effort are integrated within the previously mentioned weapons and will be evaluated independently that includes technical tests, soldier touch points, and squad level operation tests. The 6.8mm fire control system will change the game much more than the rifle. If you ask me, these weapons are being designed to take advantage of the new optic in ways that the M4 could not. Let me know which fire control system optic you like best, the L3 Harris or the Vortex one. Which rifle and ammo type do you think is the best replacement for the M16? The Army could be looking to switch weapons for a few reasons, and the evidence I've seen makes me think the caliber change isn't really at the top of the list of reasons why they want to move away from the M4. One of the major reasons that they want a new platform is to switch the case technology. Historically, all firearms, including the M16, has used entirely brass cartridges because that's where the technology has been. In the past few decades, the technology has evolved to the point where we can now use plastic polymer ammo. Like anything in the world, it's hard for the military to adopt a revolutionary technology without being able to point somewhere first as a proof of concept and say, hey, look how it worked over here already. For this reason, I really doubt the US Army would take on the huge liability of going with a new, exciting plastic-cased cartridge. Textron and General Dynamics have plastic cased ammo. I would love to see those bids get chosen by the army, but the cynic in me doubts Big Army is adventurous enough to pull the trigger on something that's so unproven in combat as of yet. There has been a lot of debate about the plastic ammo for General Dynamics and Textron. In the past, those type of ammo configurations have led to the chamber overheating because the purpose of brass ammo is to remove heat from the chamber. I've seen their test footage of them firing polymer cased ammo with everything from rifle cartridges to a 50 caliber machine gun and Gatling guns. I think technology has improved in plastic manufacturing enough that these new plastic ammo types can work when they have failed in the past. John Piazza is General Dynamics NGSW program manager and he had this to say about people worrying the army can't handle adjusting to the change to a bullpup design. Quote, the guys can change the magazines on those weapon systems just as fast, if not faster, than on an M4. They're looking for new. They're not looking for the same old grandpa's gun. End quote. This is a very different posture. General Dynamics is betting that the army might not be as old and dusty and opposed to change as they used to be. The new soldier's touch points way of acquiring weapons is evidence they might be right. He also revealed the weapon for General Dynamics has an average rate of fire of about 550 shots per minute. Evidence that the soldier touchpoint system is working is clear within the Textron bid if you look at how much this rifle has changed since its first version of the prototype. You can see how bulky the first version was around the handguard, and then now they've slimmed it down and it looks like maybe they've added the battery pack to the buttstock of the weapon now. These changes are evidence of soldier feedback being incorporated into the next generation squad weapon. What makes the NGSW system unique is its 6.8 millimeter projectile. Research and testing conducted by the Army Research Laboratory and Armament Research and Development Center led to the selection of the 6.8 millimeter caliber round for NGSW. The only thing they're up against is there isn't a ton of combat on the ground evidence of this type of plastic ammo working. As you can see, Sig Sauer has a traditional design with a reciprocating barrel and the AR design while utilizing a hybrid cartridge that incorporates a steel lower with a brass upper to decrease overall weight. General Dynamics incorporates a bullpup design that places the magazine behind the cartridge and the pistol grip, which allows for a longer barrel while minimizing the total length of the weapon. Textron utilizes an innovative design to seat and extract rounds for both the NGSWR and AR while utilizing a CT or case telescopic cartridge to fire the 6.8 millimeter round. 
All right, currently, the NGSW program is on schedule within budget to field the next generation squad weapons system beginning in fourth quarter, fiscal year 22. That means the military is actually tracking to get these rifles into the hands of troops within the next two years. I know there's a lot of skeptics out there who don't believe the 6.8mm will ever be adopted, but this news here sounds like they're exactly on track. The military wants a 6.8mm rifle because they need a new platform to support their new fire control system, which is a next generation optic. The 6.8mm NGSW and its fire control system is also meant to operate alongside the new integrated visual augmentation system, the IVAS, which is a smart goggles digital display heads up device. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I know it's been a rough year for a lot of us out there, but making these videos has helped me keep my sanity. I look forward to seeing all of you in the new year for another year of videos covering the military topics that we're all passionate about.